will move ahead. So basically, in the phase of mercantilism, it was merchants who used to accumulate profit, and it was believed that global trade is fixed. So job of these merchants were to buy from producer and sell it to consumer, and in between they used to make huge profit. They will buy cheap, sell dear. Now this business was very risky. Why? Because they have to explore new areas, they have to explore new market, and it will take huge time to do the business. So just take the example of people from Britain coming to India. So via sea they will come to India, buy goods from here, go back to Britain, sell. So one cycle of buying and selling take huge lot of time. Now if see this business was very risky. Now if this business is not given monopoly. because only under monopoly it is possible that you can earn super normal profit so if you are not given monopoly and if you are what is opposite of monopoly competition so if you are exposed to competition then what will happen your profit will fall right profit will be less under monopoly let's take for example i am the only teacher to teach indian economy so i can charge whatever fees i want right similarly if they were given monopoly to do trade with east india or the india and countries east of india they can do trade or they can charge in britain whatever price they want whether it's for cotton whether it's for tea or whether it's for any other material but in case if there is competition they cannot charge whatever price they want now monopoly was given to the companies in their own country so britain is giving monopoly to one company french is giving monopoly to one company but it does not mean that british can stop french or french can stop dutch they cannot stop each other so they always used to fight either in colony or they used to fight in the sea that's why they maintain army but country can give monopoly to one company from her country okay is it clear to you no see what is the meaning of monopoly monopoly tell just tell me dipika one thing suppose i am the only teacher to teach indian economy and you have to study indian economy will i be able to decide the price or you will be able to decide the price who will have the more buying power or who will have the more negotiating power i will have or you will have i will have so in monopoly business or the producer is the price maker he is not the price taker since i am the only teacher you have no other option you will come to me so i will never be a price taker i will never ask you at what price you want to study i will tell you this is the price at which i will teach that's why in case of monopoly it is always controlled by the government in india railways enjoyed monopoly that's why railway is not getting privatized because if a monopoly business is privatized then private sector will exploit it is only government who can make sure that goods are provided at the cost or at a subsidized price so that's why in monopoly price will never be reasonable in monopoly price will always be exploitative okay does that clears your doubt okay so let's move ahead then any other doubt from previous class Okay, in case if there is no doubt, let's start with today's class. Now, out of three question of what is balance of payment crisis, why balance of payment crisis, and what were IMF conditions, we have answered one question. What is balance of payment crisis? Let's go to the second question. Why balance of payment crisis? we faced dollar problem that is one issue but why we faced this such problem and why 1990s 1990 1991 can anybody tell me the events from the world history in 1990 and 1991 any idea about the events from world history in 1991 anybody would like to give it a try see 
first thing that will happen there is soviet disintegration earlier there were two power blocks usa and ussr okay now this ussr that is soviet union it will get disintegrated disintegrated so combined block was able to give a challenge to usa but this disintegrated one will not be able to give tough challenge major country or the major country that can oppose usa after disintegration was russia okay so ussr can compete or can give challenge to usa but disintegrated countries cannot give challenge though russia is the biggest country that emerged out of disintegration now what will happen there will be unipolar world unipolar world means usa is the single most powerful nation as a result what will happen price of dollar will increase price of dollar will increase now if price of dollar will increase in the international market then what will happen price of import will increase anything you will import in india will become expensive so costly imports okay why costly imports because price of dollar will increase that's why anything you will import will become costly yes very good uss are separated yeah so earlier it was bipolar now it become unipolar uh, can you give me example of one more event can you give me example of one more event gulf war right i hope you have drawn this chart i hope all of you have drawn this chart can i rub it okay now second was gulf war have you seen that movie airlift iraq will attack kuwait have you seen that movie so that is based on a part of gulf war only airlift so what will happen because of gulf war what do we import mainly from west asia crude so again what will happen price of crude will increase now just imagine the situation you are a country okay you import crude for this crude you make payment in dollar okay now on one hand price of crude has increased so if earlier crude was 30 dollar per barrel this will become say 60 dollar per barrel so on the one hand price of the commodity that you will buy has increased on the other hand price of dollar has also increased earlier if dollar was 50 rupees now dollar has become 60 rupees that is one sorry earlier if dollar 1 dollar was 50 rupees now 1 dollar will become 60 rupees rupees 50 to rupees 60 so just imagine situation of india earlier if they have to import one barrel of oil they will have to pay 30 into 50 that is 1500 rupees now if they want to import one barrel of oil they have to pay 16 to 60 rupees 3600 so firstly they have to bear the cost of rise in crude then they have to bear the cost of rise in dollar so it was twin effect on one hand commodity prices increase on one hand price of the currency in which you will pay that will also increase so you can see here crude has only increased by 100 100% from 30 to 60 dollar so ideally price should be 1500 to 3000 but no because currency has also increased we are paying 600 more so price has increased by greater than 100% okay price increment is greater than 100% so this is the problem that we faced because of second uh, because of gulf war this is the second problem we faced that price of crude has also increased 
and crude is something without which economy cannot function. So there was twin effect of both of this on your balance of payment crisis. Dollar price increased plus your crude price increased. Is it clear? Can I go to the third point? Okay. Now I have told you COVID disintegration and Gulf War. Now I have told you that industrial policies or reforms in India without naming them as reform has started from 1980s. You have agreed that you will wait for next chapter in the industrial policy. I will give you proof how economic reform started from 80 and continued in 85, 86. So far so good. But that created one problem that industrial policies from 1980s had one loophole. All those policies of heavy industrialization and expansion was based on external commercial borrowings. External commercial borrowings. Now what is this external commercial borrowings? This is our country India. This is rest of the world. We want our country to industrialize, <coughs> but we do not have money. So what should we do? We went to rest of the world and we told them, please give us loan. Okay. So they gave us loan. Now our industrialization or our process of industrialization that started from 80 expansion of industries happens or happened on the basis of this borrowing external commercial borrowing that is this money, see there are two ways through which India could have industrialized. Either they could have asked for the money from the rest of the world, they could have used the domestic savings. Okay, the money that I and you will save, that could be that could also be used to increase industrialization and the money saved by the rest of the world can also be used. So because there was low rate of capital formation in India, government decided they will go for external commercial borrowing. They will ask from the rest of the world that please give us money. We will industrialize our country, increase our production and give back money to you. So as a result, we decided to expand our industry on the basis of external commercial borrowing. Now, obviously, Italy, Britain, USA, France, they won't give you loan in rupees. They will give you loan in dollar. Now, when they are giving you loan in dollar, they will also take back interest in dollar, interest they will take back interest in dollar. Now again imagine the situation. You have taken loan of say $100. Now on this $100, you have to give interest rate of $10. Okay, 10%. Now earlier dollar was rupees 50. Now dollar is rupees 60. So when you were making, making, making payment of interest of $10 at rupees 50, you had to pay rupees 500 yearly. Now you have to pay rupees 600 yearly. So can you see how because of change in exchange rate your liability has increased? Earlier you used to pay rupees 500. Now you have to pay rupees 600. Suppose tomorrow if I start charging fees in dollar and not Indian rupee, then what will happen? Even if the price is same, if I am charging 100 dollar, I keep the price same. I will still charge you 100 dollar. But if there be fluctuation in the price, then you may have to pay more, right? So maybe price of commodity has not changed. They are still charging $10 only. They are charging 10% interest only. But because of the rise in price of dollar, you have to pay more. Second thing is this interest rate also increased. Why this interest rate was increased? These two events increased the interest rate in the global market because now what is happening after Soviet disintegration, Gulf War, there is a kind of uncertainty. Are we heading towards third world war? Is the world heading towards another crisis? So in the time of uncertainty, no one will like to give you loan. Okay, everybody will want to keep their money safe with themselves. So as a result, will as a result, what will happen? Interest rate in the market will also increase. Plus, if you look at the India, people will charge more interest from India. Why? Just imagine. Earlier you were in 1980, now you are in 1990. When you were in 1980, I was charging you 10% interest. No uncertainty, everything good. You have not taken huge commercial borrow, external commercial borrowings. 
बट नाउ इन 1990 आई नो यू आर फेसिंग वेरियस काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम योर फिजिकल डेफिसिट इज हाई आई विल टेल यू व्हाट इज दैट योर इन्फ्लेशन इज हाई यू कैन फेस बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट क्राइसिस सो इन दिस थ्री सिचुएशन व्हेन यू विल कम टू मी इन 1990 एंड आस्क फॉर लोन I will tell you, boss. I am not going to charge 10% anymore. I will charge you 15%. Because in 1980 you were less risky. World was more certain. Now you are more risky, and world is more uncertain. So pay me 15%, or else I will not give you the loan. So on one hand, instead of 10 dollar, you have to pay them 15 dollar. Plus, instead of rupees 50, you have to pay it at rupees 60. So what will happen? This interest at rupees 60 will become rupees 900. so from interest rate of rupees 5 is from interest amount of rupees 500 you end up paying rupees 900 so as a result your liability will increase so three things two external factors soviet disintegration and gulf war one internal factor that industrialization since 1980s was based on heavy external commercial borrowings so dollar price increased crude price increased that will cause huge inflation government borrowing in is increased fiscal deficit plus dollar is strong that will create balance of payment crisis is it clear i will give the write up is it clear this far fda related to this in what sense see let me tell you what is fdi fdi simply means foreign direct investment now what happens is that countries need dollar earlier we were a closed economy so till 1990s we did not give big push to fdi we only allowed capital in those sector where there was chances of technology transfer now what happens is that if you have to pay dollar for interest if you have to pay dollar for crude so what will happen you will open up some sector so that companies can come and bring dollar so that is the whole concept of fdi okay for the time being just restrict your knowledge about fdi or discussion on fdi to this extent only because this is just a glimpse of the problem that we faced in 1991 more discussion on exchange rate currency rate convertibility we will discuss in the chapter of external sector and exchange rate so if i start taking up that discussion here it will get more confusing for you okay is this point clear how external commercial borrowing caused the crisis okay <laughs> so see just look at the situation that you are facing crude increased dollar increased i am writing ecb for external commercial borrowing ecb increased now because of crude and dollar what is happening i mean there is no one one correlation but i am simply telling you or you do one thing do it like this okay now what was the combined effect of rise in crude rise in dollar and rise in ecb ecb first combined effect was rise in inflation i know i have not taught you inflation so what does inflation means inflation simply means rise in prices now crude is a commodity which everybody will use so if the price of crude will increase price of all the goods in the economy will increase okay so first impact that this three things caused in india was rise in inflation that is rise in price of goods second impact that all these three things combined together had on uh, our government was that rise in fiscal deficit so what is fiscal deficit fiscal deficit for the time being we will discuss it in fiscal policy for the time being just understand that it means borrowings okay so suppose if the government's liability was 100 dollar now this liability has become 150 dollar okay now suppose just take your example if you have to pay someone 100 dollar that is a burden on you now that burden has increased so rather than that burden going down it has increased you have to pay 150 dollar 
Nobody likes to live with liability. Liability means you owe money to someone. So it will always have a pressure on you, financial crunch that you have to pay money to them. So earlier you had the pressure of paying $100. Now you have the pressure of paying $150. So fiscal deficit means borrowing. It means more pressure on the government. Earlier they had to pay $100. Now they had to pay $150. Now these effects will combine together and cause third situation that is balance of payment crisis. So this was the combined effect that happened in 1991 and it was so severe that we only had dollar left for two weeks import. If we could not arrange dollar within those two weeks then after two weeks our economy will come to a standstill because after two weeks we will start defaulting on our loan. And once we start defaulting on our loan, then no country will like to give us loan further. Okay, it will create a very bad image for India. Just think you have taken money from someone and you have not able to return. So next time when you will go to that person, either he will charge higher interest rate or he will refuse you the loan. So that was the situation of India. We could not import crude after two weeks. We could not pay uh, for our debt. So we had to arrange dollar in two weeks. We only had the window of two weeks to arrange dollar. Now just imagine, this is the, this is the re one reason why I criticize IMF conditions or I criticize economic reforms of 1991. These reforms were not taken like 1980s, 85, 86 because they were guided by the thoughtful analysis and they were guided by uh, industrial policy situation that was available in that time but in this time 1991 we only had two weeks window to arrange dollar as a result government was in pressure to go to IMF and ask for dollar now when when we went to IMF they immediately told us this this these are the structural reforms that you have to take we agreed to it and then we came out with new industrial policy NEP 1991 so as a result this policy was not exactly or was not carefully done after analyzing our economy. This was done to satisfy IMF condition. As a result, we opened up the sectors, whichever we could open, we allowed foreign capital so that we can save ourselves from the foreign currency crisis. Plus, not only we opened up our uh, sectors, we failed to analyze whether it will have impact on service economy, whether it will make a direct transition, whether we should allow limited sectors to open. We were not in that position to do any such kind of analysis. And when we opened our borders in 1991, it created a change. It increased the national income, but it came at a cost. Our economy directly made the transition from agrarian to service economy. Okay, so this national, uh, new industrial policy of 1991 was not done after thorough analysis. It was done to oblige with the IMF condition. Okay? Is it clear so far? Is it clear so far? Okay. So uh, let's move ahead and... Okay. So let's move ahead and let's see another topic that what were the conditions of IMF. Okay? it is not only IMF that has to be, blamed, to be blamed, it is obviously government of India also needs to be blamed. <coughs> I will tell you how. Now reforms of 1991 created two kind of problems. Reforms of 1991. Now there were two issues related to it. On one hand, IMF imposed certain conditions See, problem with IMF condition was India was not ready to adapt to such conditions. India was not ready to adapt to such condition. Second thing was reforms of 1991 was not followed with structural reforms.
we have crossed 25 years uh, we are uh, from 1991 reform it is 2016 now why this reform has to be criticized this reform can be criticized from our understanding point of view or there are two problem with this reform was that first it was imposed or it was undertaken under imf condition now india was not ready to adapt to such condition but we have to agree to it that is the first issue second issue was reform of 1991 was not followed with structural reform so it is fine because of uh, imf condition we came up with new industrial policy 1991 but point is after this for 25 years that is till date we were very slow in implementing reforms 1991 policy for example talked about disinvestment but the rate of disinvestment or the rate at which government diluted their stake was very low similarly we knew that the country we have opened up our sector so we knew that if we do not support manufacturing sector or if we do not solve the problem in manufacturing sector or the bottlenecks in manufacturing sector our country may make the direct transition from agrarian to service economy still we did not pass land acquisition act okay land acquisition act was passed the latest land acquisition uh, was passed in 2013 okay after 1894 so 1894 was an act made by british after that another act that was passed for land acquisition was 2013 so from 1991 till 2013 acquiring a land for the purpose of setting industrial unit was a challenge in india we did not went for skill development institute or skill training institute so as a result we could not pull people out of agriculture sector we did not give big push to primary education so as a result level of literacy remain poor because we could not industrialize we could not push for large scale urbanization in the country we see till now gst reforms has not been implemented there was another direct uh, there is another indirect tax that is currently there that is value added tax this value added tax was not implemented in its true spirit in india had this value added tax would have been incorporated or implemented in india in its true spirit we do not require gst so point is we knew after 1991 that if see this is agriculture this is service this is industry this was already lagging behind we opened up our border only difference is before 1991 we did not open up our border so service sector did not pick up but after 1991 reforms we knew that we have opened both industry and service so which ever will provide better opportunity that will expand so we knew that if we do not solve problem in the industrial sector country will make a transition to service sector still for 25 in industrializing our country so that's why fault on the part of national government is that they took this policy industrial policy 1991 fine but after this they did not follow it with instru- structural reforms they did not took enough initiative to industrialize the country in this 25 years and this is what has made the difference between india and china for this 20- if you compare the data of india and china for 1970s 80 85 it is more or less same both uh, economy of both uh, china and india were on the same foot but at this time india took the shortcut and made the transition to service sector china did not faced any problem so they did not took any shortcut they took structural reforms and they made sure they make the transition from agriculture to industry as a result for 25 years they have grown at such a high pace and they are still growing so now once they industrialize they will make a smooth transition to the service sector which was not possible in case of india because we faced crisis we went for shortcut they did not face crisis they took reforms one after another so at this stage they are industrializing themselves so that's why growth of china is five times or the gdp of china is nearly five times the gdp of india is it clear i will discuss the condition but is the background clear what impact this reforms of 1991 had on india 
Okay. Just give me a moment, please. Question is what conditions were imposed by IMF? What conditions IMF is International Monetary Fund? Okay, I'm not writing the full form. I hope all of you know the full form International Monetary Fund. Devaluation of Indian rupee by twenty two percent. Now, please look at this example and tell me one thing. This is America, this is India. India produces laptop America what they do they buy laptop from India okay so what is the current exchange rate say there are three situation one dollar is equal to rupees 50 first situation cost of laptop is equal to say 300 okay now if you produce one laptop at rupees 300 and one dollar is equal to rupees 50 can you tell me in dollar term what is the price of laptop let me repeat the question okay very good so how have you arrived at six dollar? Let me tell you how we have arrived at six dollar. Three hundred rupees is the price for one laptop. Okay, so one laptop equal to three hundred. Now, rupee fifty rupees. Rupees fifty is equal to dollar one. So one rupee is equal to one by fifty dollar. So similarly, three hundred rupees will equal to 1 by 50 into 300 60 dollar uh, 6 dollar so 5 6 are 300 so therefore in dollar term it is 6 dollar so they will please give me a moment let me switch on the charger So they at this exchange rate one dollar is equal to fifty. They will buy this laptop at dollar six. Now let me change the scenario. One dollar is equal to rupees sixty. Now first tell me when it has become okay. Let's not change here. This fifty has became rupees sixty. Now tell me Indian currency has appreciated or depreciated. If from 50 it becomes 60 Indian currency depreciates. All of you are convinced with that it depreciates. 
please if anybody is any confusion then do let me know if you have understood then it is fine now tell me at 60 rupees what will be the cost of laptop in dollar terms at 60 rupees what will be the 5 so this laptop has became from dollar 6 to dollar 5 now is this laptop cheaper for American or it is expensive for American? Now it has became cheaper or expensive? Cheaper. So will it increase demand for Indian laptop or it will decrease demand for Indian laptop? It will increase the demand. So can I say that if rupee depreciates Export increases. Can I say so? Can I give this correlation rupee depreciates so export increases? However, if rupee will depreciate, then your import will become expensive. See, this we have seen from the discussion on crude that if our rupee will depreciate then our import will become expensive right suppose if you have to pay for one barrel of crude so earlier you will pay 50 rupees now you will pay 60 rupees so import will become expensive yes or no see export increase is opposite to decrease so export is opposite to import if import is increase if export is increased because of depreciation Imports will decrease or imports will become expensive. If for the rest of the world your good is cheaper, then for you goods produced in the rest of the world will be expensive. Okay? Fine. See, you can try this example by taking it at 40 also. Okay? Rupees 40. See, at rupees 40, what will happen? Price will increase to 7.5 dollar. Okay? So you can see it for currency appreciation also. How 7.5? Again, 300 divided by 40. Okay. Here it was 300 divided by 50. And here it was 300 divided by 60. So point is, we got one correlation. If rupee depreciate, export increases and import become expensive. Similarly, If opposite happens, if rupee appreciates, then what will happen? Export will fall. And import will become cheaper. Okay? Is it clear? Is it clear? See this correlation is very important. Okay. Yeah, I hope it is clear to all of you. Now tell me one thing. You know India faced balance of payment crisis. You want to bring more dollar. What will you do? Will you depreciate your currency or you will appreciate your currency? India faced balance of payment crisis. You are in place of Manmohan Singh. He was the finance minister of that time. So what will you do? Will you appreciate your currency or you will depreciate your currency? If you want more dollar. Depreciate. Okay. See there is a one riddle to it that I will not tell you right now. So this is what was told by IMF. Devalue your currency. Okay. When markets decreases the value of your currency, then it is depreciation. When you yourself let your currency fall, then it is devaluation. Your answer has one flaw because you have not asked me whether India was net exporter or net importer. Because we want dollar for that we will decrease. But our crude will become expensive. 
So for crude, I will say appreciate. So there is a fight between appreciation and depreciation. Whether you should appreciate or you should depreciate depends upon whether you are a net exporter or net importer. If you are a net importer, then you should not depreciate. If you are a net exporter, you should depreciate. Then why IMF impose such condition? We also ask this question to IMF. You are asking us to depreciate. That is fine. Our export will increase. But what about our import? We are net importer. We do not produce crude. And the two major items that we import in India is crude and gold. So how we will manage that? So IMF told it's fine. You will face problem for crude and gold. But if you depreciate, more people will like to come and do business in your country. They will come and establish factories in your country. They will establish their office in your country. So ultimately your economy will grow. So point is, there are two angles to exchange rate. Money, that is dollar, can come into your country for two purposes. Either it will come to buy goods or it will come to buy asset. So they told you will face problem for buying crude and gold. We agree to that. But if you devalue, then more people will come and do business in your country. So your capital flow in the country will increase. Your asset will be purchased in your country. So as a result, overall you will benefit. See, this thing good looks good on theory. But obviously, when will people come and buy asset? When we will provide them land? When we will provide them ease of doing business, then only that will increase. So theoretically, this was their condition that you devalue your rupee so that more money will come on account of capital flow. And as a result of that, you will be able to solve the problem of your balance of payment crisis. Now, the reason for criticizing is that they have told us that for crude and gold, you will face problem. But on account of capital transaction or for asset purpose, you will not face problem. Point is, had this condition would not have been given by IMF, we would have devalued our currency, but we would have devalued after making sure that the industrial production increased. Why China is able to keep her currency devalued is that they are net exporter. They also import crude. They also import gold. But what they did is they produce more goods than they import. So as a result, first they industrialize themselves. Once they saw that, yes, we can sell more to the rest of the world, then we will buy. Then they started devaluating and now they deliberately kept their currency devalued. Okay. Is it clear? Is the first condition clear? Okay. China point repeat. Okay. Forget China. Let's look at India. Crude. Gold. Laptop. For the for the sake of example. Goods which we sold or goods which we sell is laptop. Okay, we sell other goods also, but let us assume it is only laptop. Now, what India is doing? India's crude plus gold is greater than laptop. That is, we are net importer. If you are net importer, should you appreciate your currency or you should depreciate? I will come to that. Please let me first repeat this point and then I will come. Please tell me one thing. Uh, if you are net importer, whether you should appreciate your currency or you should depreciate your currency. If you are net importer, Am I audible? You should appreciate, right? Has IMF suggested you appreciation? Has IMF suggested you appreciation? 
No. So won't you go and ask them that do you think we are fool? We think we should appreciate. You are asking us to depreciate. What is this? So what they will say? They will say yes. You will face problem of import. Your export. But if we go for net devaluation, then what will happen? More money will come into your country on account of asset. Asset that is physical asset and financial asset. So point is there will be more factories, more jobs, okay, more output. So then we asked, so what? So they told that what will happen along with laptop you will produce hard disk. Along with hard disk you will produce a speaker. So ultimately what will happen from net importer you will become net exporter. So they told if you want to increase your production, take the short term pain for the long term gain. So you can only become net exporter when you devalue your currency and take more money. So for import you will face problem but capital flow into your country will increase. As a result you will be able to produce more goods and you will become net exporter. Is it clear? So we agreed okay we will devalue. Is it clear? Now the problem that India faced was we did the first part very well. We devalued as they told us. But we never took the measure to increase factories, jobs and output. We were sitting idle. So from net importer, today also we are net importer. We never became net exporter. Is it clear? Structural reforms that I say, what is the problem with the structural reform? This is the problem. We did not took reforms after 1991. Okay? Sir, you have told us completely Indian story. My doubt would was this China's story. This is China's story. Just replace India with China. Now what China did was, China made sure that first, they will make sure that first asset will increase. So what they will do is that they will take steps to increase factories, increase job, increase output. What China will do, China was also a net importer, right? So before depreciating and before making sure that they keep their country currency depreciated, what they did is they allowed the currency or they allowed the money to flow into asset. They allowed industry to set up. They built up their industrial base with the capital. With this industrial base, they no longer remain net importer. They became net exporter. Now when they are net exporter, they are deliberately keeping their currency depreciated or devalued. Why? Because first they went for this step. India is keeping her currency devalued despite the fact that they are net importer. But what China has done is first they build their industrial output. Once their goods have increased, once they have become net exporter of goods, they depreciated their currency to greater extent and now they are keeping it deliberately depreciated. Is it clear to you Deepika? Now another simple example is sale of China mobile in India. What do you mean by sale of China mobile in India? In what context you are saying that? In what context are you saying sale of China mobile in India? Like our import of China mobile. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, do you have any doubt? 